Hi, this is Dean with Return Ministries, and I see that some of you are coming on our regular Thursday morning meeting. We'll give you a little bit of time to come on. Um, for those uh, who've been praying for the Alio Return Center, Return Ministries, I mean, I'll spin in myself in the midst of some of the uh, false allegations that have come against us through anti-missionaries telling us we're doing something we don't do. We don't do, and we teach against, etc. And really the embarrassment that's been given to some of our partners in Israel, we really feel bad about it. We really do. Um, and it's, it's challenging on many different fronts. It's been a very, very difficult week. Uh, and yet many of you have been praying for us. And uh, first, I want to say thank you. And don't stop praying. Uh, uh, don't start stop praying or praising the Lord. We know God's going to bring some good out of it, uh, even though it's a little uncomfortable, not just a little. It's, uh, it's very painful uh, as we walk this journey and have for the past month through this, because the attacks have been relentless. Uh, but there's been some glimmer uh, of Hanukkah light hope. Here we are in Hanukkah. In fact, for many of us, we'll be lighting the eighth light this evening. Happy Hanukkah, Haksamea. I hope it's been a, a season where you've been able to rededicate, consecrate yourselves, and really come to that uh, a place of uh, moving forward into 2021. Uh, that even though we have uncertainty before us, we're finding ourselves drawing close to the Lord. Praise God. Uh, I've had a, a couple also wonderful things in the midst of a difficult week, and that's uh, uh, I've been invited to share in Africa. The board of directors are going to be really happy at the annual meeting this year. Travel expense has gone right down in 2020, uh, and yet I'm probably, uh, by God's grace, being able to teach and speak in many more different nations than I ever have. Uh, through what's afforded through Zoom Network. And uh, I've had the privilege twice this week uh, to be speak with bishops and pastors and really friends of Israel uh, throughout Africa. And um, Africa, as some of you know that know me, uh, uh, it has a special place in my heart. Um, in yesterday's meeting, that was uh, began out of Nairobi uh, with Brother Francis and Sister Anne, just two folk that have really called to really call Africa to arise and uh, to fulfill its purpose and plans. I got to share there as well. Uh, and uh, something dawned on me at the end of the meeting. And I want to share that. Uh, but before I do, I think it's important, especially uh, those of us who might not be familiar with Return Ministries or the work of Alia, to give a little bit of a review today. It's more or less what I, uh, some of what I shared in some of the presentations. Uh, I see uh, Christine Lucas is with us. She was also, I think, you, you're turning into a groupie. You, I think you were at both meetings in Africa yesterday uh or in this this week god bless you um and by the way uh, good news in malawi got a call from mcdonald yesterday some of you know him and uh, mcdonald's is engaged to be married on march 27 to louisa oh can somebody say praise the lord uh mcdonald has a deep heart for a gospel that's connected to israel and doing his little itty bitty part down there in, in Malawi. But anyways, um, I'm going to uh, show you how we started this year. Uh, we started this year in preparation to go to Jinja in January. It would be our second time we would do a conference at the mouth or the source of the Nile River, which is in Jinja, Jinja Uganda. And uh, let me just show you the promo uh, 
here just uh, to begin today's meeting, just so you can get a sense of where we're, we're going, but stay with me. And um, we just got to, there we go. Let's find our share screen. Uh, okay, and it will go like this. And this is something uh, we did uh, in preparation from the Jordan River in fall of 219 in preparation to promote the event uh, that we did in Jinja. Here it goes. Hi, I'm Dean Bai with Return Ministries. I'm here in Israel, right here at Beth Zera, Ali Return Center. And that sound that you're hearing, what is it? That's the Jordan River. We're here on the east banks of the Jordan River. Jordan River just flows from the Galilee, just a couple of kilometers north, and it's on its way down to the Dead Sea right now. We're here at what's called a Gesher. In Hebrew, that means bridge. And it was on this bridge in 2018, we celebrated the 70th anniversary by bringing Jews and Christians to sing together. That ultimately led us, interesting enough, to the source of the Nile, singing together there on January 19th in 2019. Why? And why are we going again in 2020? <laughs> Good question. A prophetic word given by Isaiah almost 27, 2800 years ago is recorded chapter 18, ah, land of whirling wings. Hmm, sounds like a little bit of Africa that is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Hey, <laughs> that might be in your region, which sends ambassadors by sea and vessels of papyrus on the waters. It's certainly not Canada. It says, go swift messengers to a nation tall and smooth of skin. I mean, God goes to a lot of trouble to identify who he's speaking to here. A nation mighty and conquering, whose land the rivers divide. He wants to speak to these people, but yet in such a way that, as it says in verse 3, all you inhabitants of the world, you who dwell on the earth. That would include me from Canada. When a signal is raised on the mountains, look. When a trumpet is blown, hear. I know you hear the Jordan River right now. But can you hear the trumpet that's calling a people that God is beckoning, he's identifying, that live beyond the rivers of Ethiopia? We're going to Uganda. We're going to the source of the Nile again to continually encourage and help the people that live in the Nile River region, to help the African understand that they have a call and purpose. That's one of the reasons why we've invited Africa to come and lead the nations with their gift of prayer and intercession and worship right here to Prayer Valley. That's, that's what we're calling this part of the Jordan Valley right now. And, and we want to be in Jinja on the 20th of January, 2020. And for some of you want to come a couple days early, please do. Because we want to meet and we want to discuss scriptures like this. We want to discuss prophetic purpose and call that God has called to Africa so that the nations together might get a 2020 vision for the restoration of Africa and Israel together for the glory and the honor of God's great name. We'll see you at the source of the Nile in 2020. So that's how we started January of 2020 
is we cast a vision. Uh, and we did it at a place we felt was very prophetic to do so. And that was at Jinjin. We did it with our African brothers and sisters and others that joined us from other nations. It was an amazing event that really set the year. And, and none of us were thinking COVID because COVID wasn't any, any kind of big news uh, in uh, early January. And it, but, the, but the event was significant. I felt, we all felt it was a global event. And for those of us who are intercessors, we know that's, that there are significant things that God calls us to do. You know, I often like to say yeah, that the Jordan River is a very significant place uh, on the planet. God has done some significant intercession there over centuries, whether it was Joshua crossing over, whether it was um, dear John the Baptist going repent for the kingdom of God is near, whether it was Yeshua HaMashiach who said for the sake of righteousness, John, we have to do this. And it's at that river and it's on the east side of that river where uh, Return Ministries through its branch, the Alley of Return Centers, has its uh, operations. And, uh, and a great work has been happening there. We feel it threatened right now with uh, some of the naysayers. Uh, we, we know it's a spiritual battle and we're calling the intercessors. And, and we're saying, we need to pray. The battle is the Lord's. Let's worship. Let's praise. Let's sing that all-time uh, hit single, His Mercy Endures Forever. I'll tell you. Uh, Give thanks to the Lord for His mercy endures forever. This, we really feel, is a very vital part of how we move ground. We take possession. How we're able to advance uh, in the kingdom of God, uh, being led by the Spirit of God. Oh, can somebody say praise the Lord? Um, so anyway, back to this meeting in Africa that I did this week. Uh, you know, for them, uh, and, and I have to say this, and, you know, and I say this in all due respect to some of the Africans that are with us here today, uh, I've, uh, you know, I've, I've realized uh, over the years that I've been given privilege to go to Africa, and along with Marty, who would say the same thing with me, uh, who made it possible for me to go the first time, uh, along with uh, Margaret Adul out of Nairobi, uh, with the uh, Israel Africa prayer altar. Um, when I first went to Africa, Tanzania in 216, unbelievable. My eyes were opened. I was born again, again, when I got the rev revelation of uh, God's heart for Israel. But I'll tell you, there was, it was like we go from glory to glory. It was like being born again, 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 having the opportunity and the privilege to begin ministry in Africa with my good brother, uh, Marty Shub. Wow. Uh, but it started a little bit earlier for me than that. Uh, some of you know the story about Kibago. Uh, Kibago was the African, escaped from Rwandan death camps, uh, made his way uh, ultimately to Canada, was looking for a people, found uh, the people that he was looking for. I happened to be part of that people with return ministries that were supposed to teach him about Israel. Uh, we, we shared, we had a lot and you know, like anything else, uh, uh, we got taught too. He helped us to understand that uh, the understanding that the church has internationally, globally, uh, we've whitewashed the gospel. We've uh, more or less, our Renaissance artists have given us fake art, uh, sorry to say that, uh, but they, you know, we have this picture of Moses in a very white uh, Pharaoh's court when good chance it was very, very black, that uh, uh, Northern Africa looked the same as Eastern Africa. Uh, 
And in fact, Northern Africa changed, Egypt changed over the centuries when the Arabs came in. That's why today, if you go into Egypt and you ask them what's your descendancy, they'll tell you uh, we're, we're Arab. Uh, with the full understanding that they knew that they came uh, through wars from Persia, Saudi Arabia, etc. Where if you're talking to Africans in Rwanda, uh, Sudan, uh, Congo, uh, Uganda, Tanzania, uh, Kenya, Eastern Africa area, and even further south. Uh, and you say, you know, what's your descendancy? And they're going, our background is Egyptian. And uh, uh, we enslaved the Jews for 400 years. We were cursed. The Bible says those, uh, when it explains the curses, one of the curses is you're scattered. We were scattered and we've been living here. Uh, for centuries. The scattering continued uh, and we became slaves in foreign lands and we became uh, slaves in Europe and the United States. And you know, in 219, we saw the 400th anniversary since some of the first slaves landed on James Bay. And so from a place of intercession, we really feel oh, this is a shift. God's going to do something for Africa. God's going to do something for the world and yet he wants to use Africa and it's connected to what he's doing with Israel. And so uh, having the privilege of being able to uh, help Africans see scriptures that are very clear that, that Isaiah 18, Isaiah 19 is about Africa. Isaiah 60 is about Africa. You know, uh, you know when, when you talk about the glory with the wealth of the nations going to Israel, what? God would be speaking about wealth coming from Africa. You know, the poorest continent on the planet. God would ask them to bring their offerings to, uh, to Israel, to Zion. Isaiah 18.7, Zephaniah 3.10. Is it possible? Uh, you know, shouldn't God be going after the richest nations? We have to realize the glory that what he wants to do in Israel is bigger than we could ever imagine. And his ways are beyond man's ways. We know that if we need to be able to support a project in the Christian world, it's easier to go to where there's more funds. Logical. It, the Apostle Paul, though, he went to Macedonia. You know, he, he went to the poor nations and he, he asked them to, 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 with the grace of giving, to give. He wanted to do it to make some of the richer nations uh, question themselves. You know, we read about that in Romans uh, chapter 15 and in 1 Corinthians 8 and 9. I, I'm saying all this to say that if you don't have a revelation of God's heart, for Africa and the redemption of Africa and its connection with Israel. I, I, want, I, want, I want to be able to put this challenge out today is that you would get into your scriptures with those questions and ask God to give you wisdom on those questions. We went to Africa to begin this year because we really believe God called us to do so. Uh, coming off 219 when we were also at Jinja. There's something about that Nile River. Of course, we see it as the Gihon. That's another message. But the reality is, is there's something significant. It's relationship to the Garden of Eden, the people there. And what God wants to do with Africa, as it says in Isaiah 18, verse 3, so all the earth will see it. All the world would know about it. It's big. I like to say it's bigger than big. So let me give you a little bit of what I'm sharing with them and let you know a little bit of where it's going uh, for two reasons. One, for some of you who are new to Alia, you can learn a little bit about Alia today. It's basically what we've been doing for 30 years, and it's really the mandate of, uh, of Return Ministries and the Alia Return Center. However, uh, for some of you who might want to find some... Uh, alignment to be able to pray in accordance to God's will as it relates to Africa, Israel, and even North America, and how it relates to Aliyah, hopefully some of those seeds could be sown, and for some others, 
maybe they could be watered and by the grace of God, uh, he'll give some increase. So let join with me. Let me uh, uh, take us to uh, a slide presentation that I developed uh, for, for some of the meetings I did earlier this week, you know, uh, I, you know, we, we, we call the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. We call the land of Israel holy. We call the scriptures holy. You know, Aliyah is holy. Uh, it's about the holy return of Israel because it's so about hallowing and sanctifying the name of God. It's more, it's much more than just a land and it's much more than just a people. It's about the name of God. And, and that's why some people say, Dean, why are you so cracked up about Ali? You are return ministries. I think you guys have got a little too far on this stuff. Come on. I want to tell you, Alia is a key to world redemption. Alia is holy. And uh, I've been teaching it for 30 years. Why? Because I'm absolutely convinced with every fiber of who I am that the body of Christ worldwide need to be praying for the return of the Jewish people and the restoration of the people of Israel to the land of Israel. It needs to be a part of our prayer life. It needs to be part of our giving life. Those that bless Israel will be blessed. It needs to be a part of our actions with Jewish people. Comfort, yes, I comfort my people. It needs to be a part of what the New Testament through the apostolic tradition says, give mercy to Israel. Give, with the mercy you've received, give it back. This is a part of who we are as a body of Christ that's living on earth right now when there is an Israel. We've been called to the holy return of Israel. It doesn't matter what nation we live in. Today, we can talk about North America. We can talk about Africa. We can talk about Israel. In fact... I keep saying today, I've already started talking about it. You know, for some of you, Return Ministries has always been an international ministry based in Canada. We're focused, number one, teaching Christians from the nations to learn their role and participate in helping the Jews from the nations. We're not just interested in giving education so that you can be good spectators of what God's doing. We want to educate and mobilize people to help the Jews home in their aliyah, in their return to Israel. We do it in a variety of different ways. We take people to Israel. We introduce them uh, to all sorts of people in Israel. If you've ever been on a tour, it's, it, you're not just seeing rocks. You're, you're, you're meeting the living stones. We want you to meet the people that have uh, embraced what God is doing. That means you're meeting Orthodox Jews. That means you're meeting Messianic Jews. That means you're meeting secular Jews. It doesn't matter what kind of Jew. Okay, God loves them all, okay? Just like he loves every ch Christian and every kind of church, every denomination. In fact, the core value of this ministry is to bring a unity uh, into God's plans, to have an uncompromising faith and uh, an unconditional love to whomever. God brings in front of us. We established the Aliyah Return Center now on the banks of the Jordan River, just a little bit south of the Sea of Galilee. Uh, it's rooted in Israel to rally and help the nations from the same ancient Galilee region of Jesus Christ. If you're familiar with our ministry, you know, we used to have students here, many students coming over the years here in Canada, but the best classroom in the world is Israel. And the Alia Return Center receives and gives experiential knowledge. You're, you come on some of our, whether they be our uh, uh, pray, stay, learn, and serve programs uh, as interns, as volunteers. And we have found that when there's no COVID and people can come into Israel, it's a remarkable way for people to learn about what God is doing in Israel. Israel is the best classroom in the world. Uh, and we have a twofold purpose at the Alia Return Center. One, we give 
Christians and educational experiences. I, I put an emphasis on the word experiences in Israel before returning them back to ambassadors. We're not really interested in Holy Land tours where you go and you go, I've been there. No, we're interested in taking a Christian, sending them back as active ambassadors in their own nations. Number two is we're always challenging and providing Christians opportunity to practically support and assist Jews in their alia. We're not really interested in just teaching about alia. We're saying, will you be active in alia? Will you help the Jewish people home in ways that God could show you? We provide opportunities as, as, as God shows us. And right now, today, I'm saying God wants to use that continent in a big way, and he wants to use Africans, and he wants Africans to go, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Okay, yeah, it would seem that most of the worst things that could happen to man happen on, have happened in that continent, especially over the last uh, few hundred years. But the reality is, he's been preparing you. Wow. He wants to use you in remarkable ways. And if we can light a fire under Africa, wow. Watch out, world. I'll tell you, because there's a powerful gospel that's coming out of Africa, a, 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 a gospel that's built not just on the foundations of the apostle, but on the foundations of the apostles, uh, the prophets. And this is, is exciting. Uh, I loved this, uh, this opportunity to be in Uganda, teaching some Hebrew songs by bringing the Orthodox, Israeli, uh, teaching them a song. Psalm 133. Dance in South Africa. Oh, all wonderful. It's not enough to do that, Africa, in, uh, in your own nation, uh, in Africa. Um, you got to come over here to North America. We need you. Uh, and uh, we've started a process. COVID interrupted it. Uh, but that process uh, was bringing a team uh, of of dancers and singers out of Uganda, and, and not for the purposes of taking them just into local churches, uh, but actually taking them amongst the Jewish people. And I hope in the years to come that we'll have plenty more opportunity, and Africa itself will take the initiative. They'll put together their own African song and dance teams, worship teams, uh, and with, with the intent that when they come, to North America, they want to go into the Jewish communities. They want to give mercy to the Jews. This was amongst 10,000 in Montreal. This was celebrating Israel's uh, 71st anniversary. Let's let, you're gonna have, you, there's the, where it's being filmed from, you can't see the African children, but Darius is eight years old and he's, he's leading almost 10,000 Jews uh, in this celebration, and I'll tell you, he melted hearts when he said, happy birthday, Israel. That's a big deal for uh, Jewish people to hear people from the nations, especially Africans, say those words. Let, let's, let's give a listen. <laughs>
Alia. For some of you who might be unfamiliar with its meaning, it means to ascend, to go up, to make exodus, to return, to immigrate. You remember the big exodus out of Egypt, Northern Africa? That was Alia. The Jewish people were going up to Israel. Uh, the modern equivalent uh, of the word exodus or to ascend today is the word immigrate in Israel. Uh, but if you're asking a Jew, if you are going to immigrate to Israel, they might say back, oh, you mean make Aliyah. And, uh, you know, we're here to declare when they return home from whatever nation they're coming from. In the last uh, yeah, a couple days, 252 Jewish people came back from India. Uh, last month, uh, there was about the same that came back from Ethiopia. In fact, January, February, we're looking for another 20,000 Ethiopians, Jewish Ethiopians, to leave Ethiopia and return to, uh, to Israel to live. Aliyah, again, it's, it's holy. It's about the holy return of Israel. Today, I want to speak about something that I like to share about when I get opportunity. Uh, I'm going to do it very quickly. Uh, I could take probably a day on each one of the eight points I'm about to, to say to you. But again, I want to, for, especially for those of you who are not understanding Ali or understanding its purpose and plan as it relates to Israel, or even as today as I'm connecting it with Africa. Um, is each one of these points, take some of the scriptures that I'll show with each point and study them yourself. I'm not going to go through them and I'm not going to go in depth today. But I just want you to know that because there's been an awkwardness in reading the Holy Scriptures, um, that uh, we're almost being in a position as the church, we have to almost learn again how to read the Scriptures. Before the, the Jewish people, part, excuse me, before the first advent of Jesus Christ, when he first came in a season of Christmas, we all are going to be celebrating it in the next few days. We're going to hear about scriptures that are everything about uh, uh, yeah, a virgin giving birth. Uh, we believe it literally. Uh, we're going to hear uh, that it took place in Bethlehem. And we'll hear those stories. And what we're, we're going to talk about how, uh, if we use the prophetic word, Micah said, the ruler would come forth out of Bethlehem. Now, when we look at the first advent of Jesus Christ coming to earth, many of us believe, as God incarnate, that, that, that God would take on flesh and bones and ultimately be without sin and die and be buried and rise again and ascend. After that resurrection, he ascends to be on the right hand of God. What's that ascension? That word means alia, to go up. Alia is at the core of our gospel. And we're going to hear those scriptures. But what happened in between that first century and where we are today? How many of those same scriptures do we read, literally? And yet we are coming, and many of us are believing that we're in the end times, and we're coming to the second advent, meaning the Messiah is coming again. And do we still read those scriptures, literally? Or did somehow God change since the first advent of Christ and what will be his second as he comes as a lion, not as a lamb, but as a lion, as a king of kings, very differently than the first time, uh, not as a baby, but in the same way he left, coming back to the same earthly city he left from, the literal city of Jerusalem, to the same mountain he made Aliyah from, the Mount of Olives. Why? 
have somehow all the scriptures that prepare the way have we turned and only look at them so often from a spiritual lens wonderful allegories oh yes we have great applications in using the prophetic word for our lives some of them there are first baptism scriptures certainly but but i asked the question because i think we have to answer it has god changed does he only allow the scripture to have its fulfillment in its literal sense for the first advent of jesus christ or if we believe as christians jesus is the messiah and he he's not coming for his first time but he's coming back a second time do we read the scriptures in zechariah when he lands on the mount of olives and it splits will that happen literally or do we spiritualize that you see there's there's some confusion and we've got to and my exhortation to you today is we must read the scriptures first literally and make that your principle make i mean if there's any bible education here today make that your principle then you'll have a better you will be in a better place to better understand the law and the prophets jesus said after his resurrection on the road to emmaus how foolish you are not to believe all that was written about me you remember the rich young ruler or probably not the young one the one that was uh dead in hades and he's he's giving direction to abraham and he's saying tell abraham tell abraham to go dip his or, or tell abraham to tell lazarus to go dip his finger and put it in my mouth at least do that for me and if you're not going to do that would you please go warn my brothers and what was the response that we get from jesus he says they have the law and the prophets hey this is new testament do we have the law and the prophets do we understand the law and the prophets and if part of why we not might not be fully understanding them is it because we decided somewhere in history to read them differently and because of that we lose sight of timing and we lose sight of interpretation and understanding and so my exhortation to you is read the scriptures correctly because some of those scriptures are happening right now and some of those scriptures are not just for israel there are scriptures there for the nations and those scriptures that are there for the nations are exhorting the nations to have prophetic obligation and take responsibility and, and, and I believe that as the church begins to read the scriptures and interpret them in accordance to apostolic fashion, I believe that we'll find ourselves participating in the word of God, allowing Yeshua, Jesus, to participate through us and the word will become flesh. The scriptures say, in Isaiah 19, that the evidence, the testimony of Jesus Christ is what? The spirit of prophecy. And, and this is why it's so important that we have a gospel that's not just built on the foundations of the apostles, but also the prophets. And if it is, then we'll find ourselves proclaiming Jesus Christ according to a revelation of a mystery that's been hidden for ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings. We learn that in the end of the book of Romans. That's New Testament scripture. <laughs> uh, Romans 16, 25 to 27. The, these, the, there's much in the New Testament that points us to what we call the Old Testament. But it doesn't only point us to read it in, you know, basically for self-gratifying ways and application for me or spiritualizing or wonderful allegory to share in a sermon but to be able to read them from a place of is this happening or has it already happened and who's the prophet addressing is he addressing the nations and which nation and i'm telling us today that some of those prophecies are addressing African nations and giving Africans a role and a purpose that all the earth will see, Isaiah 18. Let me continue with my 
slideshow uh, and talk about the relevancy of Alia. Let me speak today of eight points. Again, just giving you a taste. Redemption. Revealing God's time to favor Zion. That time is here. And to bring her out of sin and exile. It's about return of his people out of their captivity and exile from all the nations. Where? To a specific place. Not Uganda. Not Canada. Not Europe. But to the promised holy land of Israel. Promised in covenant to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The relevancy of Aliyah is about restoration of the Holy Land of Israel, Jerusalem, even sight and hearing, because sight and hearing was taken away for a season. It was necessary so that this gospel wouldn't just be for Jewish people, but ultimately for all the world, you and me. The relevancy of Ali is for repentance in the lives of both a Gentile and a Jew to the God of Israel. And the relevancy of Ali is for revelation of the hallowing of God's holy name. The relevancy of Ali is for a response. What kind of response? It's a, prof it's a response in prophetic obedience by those of the nations. To those in the nations, it should say. Saved by Jesus Christ, called by the Father, and enlightened by the Holy Spirit to bless Israel out of love and mercy. The relevancy of Allah is about reconciliation of both Jew and Gentile to the God of Israel. The relevancy of Allah. And it's so often we hear this most from Christian Zionists, but I'm trying to say it's much more than this. It's about the return and the ret of the returns of the Messiah and King to Jerusalem. If the only reason we're helping a Jew come home is so that Jesus uh, might return, I, I think there's so much we've missed. And, and it's important that we connect with the heart of God and, and understand that it's much more than that, and yet it leads to that. It hastens the return of our lord these i don't know would you agree with me with just with the eight points and i'm only touching on eight right now there's so many more uh that with these eight points that it would be mindful if i was a christian living in this hour when israel's already being established jerusalem's being liberated and jews are returning from four corners of the earth including africa would it not be incumbent on us even just as as a place of responsibility as a father to my children as a husband to my wife as christians in a local church collectively to uh, to at least have a position on aliyah on exodus something so that we can ask what is the application of this in this hour I think so. I believe so. And I've been acting in this way for many years with a lot of other wonderful, great people. Praise the Lord. Uh, Ali is redemption. Let's go through this quickly. Romans 11, 30, 32. Uh, he, he, it's about God giving us mercy just so we can go, oh, wow, I get to go to heaven. No. It's so that we can attain a destiny on earth before one day we'll have that glorious hope. Yes. And he's given us mercy to give back to the Jewish people. And to understand Romans 11 will better help us understand the altar call in Romans 12, where he says, therefore, on behalf of this mercy, which mercy? The mercy he talked about in Romans 11. Actually, he started talking about in Romans 9. He said, on behalf of this mercy, I beseech you, brethren, offer your bodies as living sacrifices not as a dead sacrifice, <laughs> as a living sacrifice. This is a worthy act of worship. Wow. God wants us to give mercy to Jewish people. That's a call for all of us if we are from the nations, a Gentile. We are supposed to give mercy to the Jewish people. So I need that to be a part of my life, my family, my local church, my nation. 
if I'm going to follow an apostolic authority, I need to give mercy to the Jewish people. And I want to, because there's promises in, uh, in chapter 12 that are going to bring me into a, a greater relationship with the Holy God of Israel. He says, if you'll do this, read it. It's in your Bible too. If you'll do this, you'll have, and, and, and stay away from the things of the world, your mind will be renewed. It will actually be transformed. What is the key to transformation of, and the renewing of our mind? It's about giving mercy to the Jewish people. That's what my Bible says. And it goes on to say, then you're going to know his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Well, if I'm an intercessor and I want to pray according to his will, not based on what the newspapers say, I need to pray biblically. I need to pray in accordance to his will that has been written in the law and the prophets and yet needs to be executed. Aliyah is about redemption. Ali is about the return to the land. It, 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 again, I said earlier, it's not just about returning to any land. It's about returning to the land that I gave to their fathers. And the fact that it's happening now in our lifetime, and it hasn't happened in almost 2,000 years, that's a significant uh, sign of what hour we're living in. Ali is about restoration. We read right early on in the book of Acts that, that Jesus must stay in heaven. He can't leave. He can't come back. What's going to prevent him coming back? It says very clearly in Acts 3, verse 19 to 21, until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets. Those are the prophets that are written down, not the next one who shows up in your church that has a business card, says, I'm a holy prophet. I'm a holy apostle. The one that God took time to keep their words canonized for many years so that ultimately a people who would be filled with the Holy Spirit and would have eyes to see and ears to hear could read the ancient instructions and then find courage and make the choices to collectively work with God to fulfill those words. That's the spirit of prophecy. And that time of the restoration of all things are here, but there's many scriptures that have been spoken by the mouth of all his prophets since the world began that need to come to pass. Uh, we are living in the time, read Isaiah 42. It, it speaks about who's going to listen to this. There's blind, there's deaf people, but amongst this, there's also eavesdroppers. People that have been given eyes to see, to open up the ancient words that once were sealed and now have been opened through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lamb of God, that those seals have been broken. We can now go in and begin to read what others haven't been able to read, and yet for the purposes of getting the, the mysterious instructions that are for our part from the nations. It's the, the Old Testament is not just for the Jews. There's a part that's very clear that's there for the Gentiles, those from the nations. And it spells out even specific nations, like even those in Cush, Ethiopia, even those in, uh, in Africa. And that's why I can never read the word Egypt without understanding the word. Yeah, uh, Africa. He says, who's going to say restore? Will you say restore? Who among you will give ear to this? Who will listen and hear for the time to come? This is a challenge for all of us. Those words are alive in the hour that we're living in. And Ali is restoration, but it's also about repentance. Then I'll give them a heart to know me that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return to me with their whole heart. Wow. These are things that are before us, uh, and it's exciting to be alive in this hour. And yet I believe Ali is also repentance for us from the nations, because we have been so far away from understanding Ali. Oh, it, it, even if it's difficult for you to understand me today, I would just say, go before God. 
Yeah, go before him and just say, Daddy, is there something about Aliyah that has meaning for me, my family, for my church, my nation? Can you give me a revelation on it? Because if it is, I want to be about it. And, and if there is, would you grab me a repentance that I might turn to you in these things? Did I say Ali is a revelation? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You can say to many people, are you pre preaching Jesus? Yes. Are you proclaiming Jesus Christ? Yes. But Paul said, preach Jesus Christ according to a revelation of a mystery. Ask that same Christian. Are you proclaiming Jesus according to a revelation of a mystery? And if, if they can't answer that, please don't condemn them. It's all right. It, it, this comes by revelation. But if you've got the revelation, help them to understand that this has been a secret since the world began. But it's now, in our hours, be made manifest. And how? By the prophetic writings, especially if you read them literally. <laughs> and it's been made known to all nations. God's no respecter of person. It, it's all denominations. And it's according to the commandment of the everlasting God and for the obedience of faith. This isn't for believers. There's enough believers out there. It's about those who believe that want to obey God. And this will bring revival. The, that which we've been praying, it will bring revival. But it, that revival begins in Jerusalem first. We have to see to them first. Ezekiel, one of my favorite scriptures, uh, speaks very clearly that it's not about Israel. Read all of Ezekiel 36. All of it. Get it in you. If you're new to this, get Romans 11. Get all of Isaiah. This book's alive. Get all uh, 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 of Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Even the minor prophets. All the prophets are alive right now. If you've got the Holy Spirit and you have eyes to see, read them. Read the scriptures literally, and you watch in that simplicity how you're going to get revelation. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake. This isn't about Israel. It's about God's name. Israel's the chosen instrument that he uses so that ultimately nations could know who God is. And enter into relationship with him and find destiny and a part for us to live on earth. He says that when you're in the nations, you profane my name. Oh, sure he does. Sure they do. Because you see, he promises that they will live in the holy land, in the promised land. And so if they're living in the nations, it makes like, what's the problem here? So you see, there's a role for us to encourage the Jewish people in the nations. Huge. And, and I believe we're going to see more of this over the next few years is we're going to see the church going, wow, I need to learn how I can connect to the Jewish people. And, and that's a, that in itself is huge. It's one thing to get the theology. I'm talking about that today. But how do I relate to a Jew? How do I speak to a Jew? How do I celebrate? How do I, how do I love them without a condition? How can I relate to a Jew not feeling the pressure that I, I have to proselytize? These are important things that Christian needs to understand. And that's why uh, at Return Ministries, we do something called Enom. If you want to uh, write this down, I, I hope Peg will put the web page in, um, in the chat. Come to Enom. Go to the web page, register, and join us. Our next session is on January 17th, and we do it every Sunday. Uh, and if but you can go there right now and you can see some of the sessions where Christians and Jews study the Bible together. This is unprecedented. Orthodox Jews and Christians sitting down, not so that they can make the other person like themselves, but simply to learn and understand God's word. E dash gnome, N O A M dot org. Go there, register. Be a part of that because we need to be on a curve of greater learning and understanding uh, of things we might not always be able to get on a Sunday morning service is how do I interact with the Jewish people when God gives me an opportunity to so that I'm not doing it in an offensive way or in ways where they're already looking at us with mistrust because if it wasn't an inquisition, it was a crusade, it was a holocaust, they have great reasons not to trust Christians. Yes, 
It's about his name. And it ultimately says, and the nation shall know that I am the Lord. This alia has to do with nations ultimately knowing the Lord, says the Lord God. When I'm hallowed in you, in Israel, before their eyes, us. So they're going home, releases something on planet Earth, so more people will know this God through the blood of Jesus Christ. For I will take you from amongst the nations, speaking about Israel, and gather you out of all the countries, and I will bring you back to your home, your own land. This is good news. It's good news for Israel. It's good news for all the nations. Ali is a revelation. If we can get a connection with this revelation, if we can act in this revelation, uh, life will change uh, in the body of Christ. If it hasn't already because of COVID, it will change because of this. Ali is a response in prophetic obedience. I've spoken earlier. There is a part for the Gentiles. If you're not Jewish, you're a Gentile. If you are living in the nations, there's a part for you. Uh, the reality is, if you, if you are considered a foreigner by Jewish standards, by biblical standards, uh, a stranger, maybe the neighbor, then there is a part for us that has been written. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. How we have mercy? How does the Lord have mercy on Jacob? Somebody answer that. Somebody tell me they've been listening to me this morning. How does the Lord have mercy on Jacob? I'm not going forward until one person unmutes themselves and tells me how the Lord has mercy on Jacob. By bringing them to the land he promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> hey, thank you. That's a macro version. But taking it to the micro, what did we read in Romans 11? Verse 30. God gives us mercy to give back to them. And that's how the Lord does it. He does it through us. Ah! He wants to use us. Ah! He's given us a purpose, and he will choose Israel, and he will settle them in their own land. The strangers, that's us, will join with them, and they will cling to the house of Jacob. No different than Ruth, cling to Naomi. You remember that chapter? Great story to help us understand the purpose for the Gentile. The Moabite Ruth clung to Naomi and says, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. And where you go, I will go and let nothing but death separate you and me. Isaiah says, bring out the blind people who have eyes and the deaf who have ears. Romans eleven seven. 7, who's the blind and the deaf people? There's a purpose for us. Not to condemn, to love without a condition. And as my brother just said, the 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 macro way of, uh, uh, of of providing that mercy is actually bringing them home. Way to go! Thus saith the Lord God, verse chapter forty nine, verse twenty two. Behold, I will lift up my hand in an oath to the nations. I will set up my standard for the peoples. They shall bring your sons in their arms, and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Isaiah forty nine. Dee -dee. Write that chapter down. Key chapter for nations. He, again, always ask the question, who's the prophet addressing? Is he speaking to Israel? Is he speaking to the nations? Has he already spoken and is this being fulfilled? Or is he speaking this now? And this is such a living word. It's like reading my newspaper. There are some prophecies right now that are like opening up your local newspaper. Ali is about reconciliation. Yes. Uh, the, the chapter Isaiah 49, that we just read that verse out of uh, verse 22. Paul quotes 2 Corinthians 5.19, and he justifies what it means to be an ambassador. And to be an ambassador of reconciliation, he justifies it by using Isaiah 49. Very, very important. We are about unity. And God is using the body of Christ, the church, those from the nations to be a part of it. Ali is the return 
of returns. Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, he says, I tell you, I tell you, not see me again until he tells us when you're going to see him again, when he's going to return. He said, set it from the same mountain he would return to until you say how blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. So there's something that he wants a welcoming party to do. So you need people back home that ultimately should perhaps be a part of that welcoming party. Some of this makes some Jewish people uncomfortable, but this is what we believe. It's not something we impose. And in Zechariah, we, we see the connection between Matthew 23 and Zechariah 12. Because he says, a day will come where I will pour out his spirit on the inhabitants of Jerusalem. What kind of spirit? This is interesting. Underline it. If you're an underlining person in your Bible, it's a spirit of grace and supplication. And, you know, for years, I, always, I, I got the grace part, but I didn't understand the supplication part. But the supplication has to do with something to ask. And Jesus said in Matthew 23, until you say how blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Read Zechariah 12, Matthew 23. Boom. You'll, you'll understand that Aliyah is pointing to the return of the returns. Uh, Zechariah 14. There's several scriptures. This is big. It all leads to glory. Aliyah leads to glory. You know what happened when they sang? Hinei Tov, Give thanks to the Lord for his mercy endures forever. The glory fell. It fell and Jehoshaphat fought that army in that battle. It fell when Ezra laid the foundations of, uh, uh, of the second temple. Uh, it fell... Uh, when Solomon uh, stood in the priests and they sang that song. It's a hit single. It's gone throughout history. His mercy endures forever. And we are a vessel in which that mercy is called to flow through. Read Aliyah, uh, pardon me, Jeremiah 16, 14, 16, and really make a commitment to be fishers of man, as it relates to Alia too. I'm saying today that there's a call, uh, and Alia is a holy return of Israel. I'm encouraging us today to be a part of this return and, and to be a part of what God is doing for the glory of, uh, of his great name uh and i'm inviting you all now now getting back to africa um you know we have programs to bring jewish people home in the 90s it was give us 200 dollars. we'll help do the paperwork we'll help uh uh pay off the debts of the russians we'll get them on a bus and we'll get them to the airport and then the jewish agency would fly them home by 2003, we began working on a program called Project Return, where we saw, you know, what we need to do with the Jewish people is just, just not get them to the airport, get them to Israel. We need to help Christians and Jews develop relationship because we haven't done a very good job over the last 2,000 years. And so more important than money was relationship. And so we asked those for the nations, if you want to bring a Jew home, would you? Go to uh, our website at return.co.il and would you actually fill out an application telling us what your expectations are in helping to bring a Jewish person home or a Jewish family home. But at the same time, we would give an application to a Jewish person and we would say, what are your expectations? And we would say, would you mind? These people are only learning about Aliyah. Some of them might help you financially. They're all going to pray for you. Some of them might even visit you when you're in Israel. Um, some of your kids could learn. They could maybe even send pictures to their kids. Uh, but can we bring a relationship together? And in a sense, we were asking a church or a family to sponsor a Jewish person. It's been a, a very successful program over many years. Great relationships with churches and families that have gone that began before they left to Israel here in North America. 
once they got to Israel. And uh, we've heard some of the most outstanding stories. Unbelievable. And it helps bring the church in Israel together. It helps bring Jew and Gentile together and doing it in a very respectful, mutual way uh, that uh, respects one another's boundaries and allows us opportunity to give mercy, allows us opportunity to comfort, allows us opportunity to help bring the Jewish people home. Well, I want to tell you what happened yesterday. Because it was like I got a revelation in the midst of teaching Africa. But before I do, I just want to ask Pig to expound a little bit more on Project Return. So some of you are saying, you know, I need to be a part of Ali. I need to do this. Uh, Pig, would you come on? Because I know you said you have no time for me today because you're only working on applications so as to be able to help bring Jewish people home. Would you please come and just share a little bit of what that means so that some of the nice people that are listening uh, can understand, and maybe they might want to get in touch with you. Can you put uh, me up on the, as the speaker? Yeah, you are. You are. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, well, I, I want to go back just a little bit uh, to encourage people that are maybe new to this, because I was new to it too. I've been a believer for a number of years, but I didn't know beans all about Alia. Um, but in 2003, early in 2003, a friend of mine asked me if I'd come on a, an intercessory trip to Israel. And so in the midst of the second desert storm war, where Saddam Hussein had had weapons of mass destruction, Jerusalem was his target. There we were, praying in Jerusalem. And one night, I was laying in my little bed in, my, in our uh, bed and breakfast place, and I opened the Bible to Ezekiel 36, and I read it from the very first verse to the very last, and the light of revelation came into my spirit. And I realized that this was about God's holy name. And it had been dragged through the puddles um, because of things that, that had happened to the Jewish people, but he, he was now telling us how to restore God's holy name. And it was through bringing his people home so that he could cause them to hallow his name so that he could then release the knowledge of his name to every nation. And then he would pour clean water out on them. And it, it just struck me so deeply. I didn't know anything about Return Ministries then because Return Ministries hadn't even started. This was March of 2003. Well, fast forward to June of 2003. I'm in my daughter's home in Regina and, and I have a dream. And God, in that dream, I won't go into it in depth, but he told me what my message to the Jewish people is, is faith, hope, and love. And I knew that I could carry that because those words mean so much to me. We went to Israel. I met Dean Bai in uh, August. Uh, we began to dream about return ministries. I went to Israel in the fall and I was invited to go on, an, on a, um, a trip to um, Ukraine to bring back Jewish people. My very first taste of Aliyah, 118 Olim on a ship from Odessa to, to Haifa. And that really cemented the heart-to-heart the -heart people, the young people. There was a man that was brought on in a, in a litter, um, like a gurney, because he was, wanted to die in Israel. And then there was young children that we, we wrapped them in, in clothes. And, 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 oh, it was such a wonderful trip. And when we landed in Haifa, I said to the Lord, um, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to be part of the fishers that go into the former Soviet Union, or do you want me to be involved in, in Alia in America? And he said, North America. And so Dean and myself and others, we started Return Ministries. And here I am in Jerusalem and I have another dream. And in the dream, the Lord asked me to help him lift a heavy plant pot. And I helped him lift this heavy pot. And he looked into my eyes with his eyes of love. And he said, I'm doing what I like to do best. I'm planting. And so from that day on, I've been planting. I've been helping to raise funds for Jewish people to go home, but it isn't just the funds. The funds is just the glue that, that brings us together. 
we we want to encourage them we want to pray for them we want to gain relationship with them and that's why project return is not just give us your money project return is saying we want to introduce you to the family or the couple or the individual that you're going to help and over the years since that time we've had a wonderful time but the very first person we ever helped was when i was driving from vancouver to um, ontario my very first time to live with uh, the return ministries team and we'd gotten a, an, an email from a rabbi in Winnipeg, uh, and in fact, it had been forwarded to us by other p uh, ministries that knew we were just beginning. And so uh, Rabbi Ariankin, he wrote, I've read the scriptures, it's time for me to go home, will you help me? So I'm driving through Winnipeg on my way here, and so I stopped in and visited him and his wife and two children at the time. And uh, he said, why are you doing this? You're Christian, we're Jewish, why are you doing this? I said, for the same reason you're doing it. You read the scriptures, it's time for you to go home. We've read the scriptures, it's time for us to carry you home. And so he was our very first one and we've met with him in Israel since. And uh, we, we've tried to remain in relationship with those that are willing to do that. And it's been wonderful. And in fact, Dean talked about prophecy, fulfilling prophecy. And there was a moment in, in 2012 when we were in, in Jerusalem, uh, we had on tour and we invited all the lone soldiers. These are young people from the nations that come without their families to go into the IDF and then to live in Israel uh, as making Aliyah. And we invited them all to come to a dinner and an overnight in a thousand year old house in the old city of Jerusalem. And I will never forget this scene. I asked two of our people, Carol Zimmer and Sharissa Hould, to go to, the, to um, the, the gate, which is the name of that gate? The Jaffa Gate, the Jaffa Gate, uh, mm -hmm. the entrance to the old city. And there they were, there was a sea of people. There always is, except right now, and those days there always was a sea of people in that entryway into the old city and there they were with a great big sign and that sign had one word on it and that sign was return <laughs> and that was the, the sign that the soldiers were looking for so they knew where to go in the city and they led them to they led them to that dinner that we had with them and so I want to say to you that are listening and those that might watch this later on on, on, our, uh, on our site, that there is a role for you, for every one of us. We can either um, introduce you to the people and you can remain part of that. We've got, we've got churches that have been five years into the sponsorship of someone until the people get fully settled. We've got ones that just give us some funds and that's the end. That's our Alia fund. But project return is for relationship. And, and we, so I want to invite you to really be part of what we're doing. We have helped babes in the wombs home. Um, you know, pregnant women that have gone home and we've helped them. And we've helped a 91-year-old woman home. And all in between, many, many lone soldiers and uh, I, I just strongly recommend that if you can only afford a little bit or a little bit of time to pray, it is so worthwhile because of the promises of God. Those who bless Israel will be blessed. And so uh, get in touch with us and we'll, we'll arrange things for you if you want to be in touch with your people. We've had wonderful relationships that they then give us testimony on later of what it's meant for them. We're a safe place for them to come to. And so we just want to invite you to, to fulfill three scriptures. Uh, we want to invite you to carry a Jewish person home, Isaiah 49, 22. We want to invite you to comfort them by being, being part of their return, helping to pay for their, their um, sometimes it's plain fare, sometimes it's getting their, their treasures home in a container. And that's Isaiah 40, comfort, comfort ye my people. And we want to invite you to serve them 
And that's Isaiah 14, verses 1 and 2. Serve them, the people from the nations, serving the Jewish people coming home. But there's a very important part in verse 2, and that is to pray against their oppressors. We've been given authority to pray against the oppressors of Israel, Satan's horde. And so intercession is very important too. There's many different Israel prayer groups that you can join. And so I thank you for today for listening. I thank you for this precious presentation. Make sure that when it's posted that you share it with people. You can be ambassadors for Israel and uh, anywhere you are. And these are the ones I'm dealing with right now. All of these Betish, Yonatan, Claire, Chigger, Gatti, Moabi, Gusset, Hoax, Katzman, Sheridan. They're, you know, it's just such a privilege to be able to help a Jewish person home. And you know, th there's just rewards that you can't even imagine with the pleasure and the favor of God for those that are going to be doing this. Join the project. The, 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 the peg. Tell me, you just mentioned some names. Um, listen, if somebody is listening in right now today and they want to be a part of that, uh, what's what do they do first? Well, you go to Return Ministries, return.co.il, and you'll see um, a, a a place called Alia, and underneath that Alia you'll see a bunch of different uh, files and Project Return will give you Jew and Gentile. So if you're Jew, you get an application form there on the left. If you're a Gentile, you get the one on the right. And uh, oh, let, let me just pause out. just just to summarize. So what you're actually saying, uh, if I'm Jewish and I go to the Return website, I'm going there because I wanna find that application and I wanna fill it out because I need help. Yes. And I'm willing to agree that I will, for that help, uh, give an education on my own Ali. Is that correct? Yes. They share their testimony. They send a picture. You can see the one family right here. And, um, and then we get the references. And then we match them with um, individuals, couples, uh, Israel prayer like somebody that, that is a Christian or a Christian church that says, we want to be bringing Jewish people home. We want to participate in Aliyah. They go to the Gentile application form. That's is that right. correct? That's correct. And, you know, um, we've got people that give $20 a month. We've got people that give 50 and and $100 a month. We've got people that will give a $1,000 at the end of the year. We've got a, a church in Badger newfoundland elderly people at, at that church they every week they put money in aside and they send what it is twice a year to us and it's usually enough to get a container home of people that are that are heading to make alia it's, you know and so the big and small and the other thing is that you can sponsor um, a Jewish person that's helping us over in Israel, or a Gentile person that's given up one or two. Hang on, hang on. I'm, your I'm, life. I'm, excuse me, Peg. Let them go to the website. Look for all that other stuff. I'm very focused right now, and I want to help a person who wants to help a Jewish person home. They go to the website, and if somebody would put that website up right to to get to Project Return uh, on the chat so that you can get it uh, and go to the Gentile application form, fill it out, G send this to share it on, uh, on, on, on website. This is the end of the year. We know that people want to end the year right. We started the year by saying at Jinja, at Uganda, get a vision 2020 for Alia. Don't let this year go out. There's been many events that have happened, but if there's a vision we can get, that's for Alia and to find our part in it. And we are grateful for the folks like Peg and the team that she has uh, to be able to take these applications and be able to go through the application, the Jewish application, she's doing that today. And then the Gentile application, the church application, the family, and begin to play 
matchmaker, 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 give me a match. And then you are now in a process of beginning a relationship. I remember a pastor's wife said to me, she said, you know something? Uh, if every Christian on the in the world just had one Jewish person that they would help for the rest of their life, the mandate that's been given in the law and the prophets, boom, would be done. In fact, Zechariah says they will take seven, pardon me, 10 from the nations, chapter eight, will grab one Jew and help them home. And this is bringing me to my African equation. Thank you very much, Peg, helping us to understand Project Return. Keep on going, 81 years old. And how does she get excited in a day? Helping another Jewish person get home. You're I'm looking, looking forward to hearing from every one of you. Okay, Peg, God bless you. Thank you. Mother you of too. Israel. You get your children home. Goodbye. Amen. Goodbye. Praise the Lord. So, so as I as I as I get back to my African equation, which is how I set up today, there I was minding my own business, speaking to these friends of Israel and different Frank nations, and they're asking me questions at the end. How do we help? How do we help? Boy, I wish I had this problem in Canada, United States, and Europe. <laughs> how do we help? How do we help? We want to help now. Now these are people, and I would say in some of them because I know they live from hand to mouth. They don't have savings. They don't have anywhere near the luxuries many of us have. When they're locked down in COVID, they don't have a lot of the things that the Westerner has in their home to entertain them and entertain their children. It's a completely different situation. And these people are asking, how can we help? How can we help? I mean, it brings tears to my eyes when I hear this. And, and I have to tell you, because the Bible says, this is what's going to happen. Isaiah 60 clearly speaks that the wealth will come in from the nations. But if you read Isaiah 60, it's very, very clear that it says, herds of camels will cover your land. Are those the camels coming from Canada, United States? Maybe it's the camels from uh, Belgium. It says, Young camels of Midian and Ephah and all from Sheba. Sheba? Queen of Sheba, where was she from? Will come, bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. All Kadar's flocks will be gathered to you. The rams of Nebaioth will serve you. They'll be acceptable as offerings on my altar. And I will adorn my glorious temple. The, the Lord seems to indicate that Africa is going to lead us all. You go to Isaiah 18. And, and, and it speaks with a strong GPS. You heard me talk about it in the beginning. Read the first two verses. A people that are uh, speak many different languages. A, a, a people that land is divided by rivers. They, they have papyrus boats. It tells you that they have winged uh, uh, mosquitoes uh, uh, in, in the air. It, it, land of whirling wings. No other continent like Africa that has so many birds and bugs. And it, and, and it says... All, it tells us not what color their skin is. It tells us what texture of skin they have. Smooth skin. I love going into different African nations and, and, and their kids. They love to pull the hair on my arm because they're not used to seeing hair on, on arm. They're not, they're not so concerned about my color, but they're concerned that I, about the texture of my skin. <laughs> and, and I look at these beautiful people. Polished skin. Smooth skin, just like Isaiah says. And then it says in verse 3, All you people of the world, you who live on the earth, when a banner is raised on the mountains, you will see it. And when a trumpet sounds, you will hear it. And look what verse 7 says. At that time, gifts will be brought to the Lord Almighty. God has an expectation that Africa is playing a part in bringing the wealth of the nations into Israel. I had someone from DRC Congo get in touch with me the other day, Gabagel, who was the original person who brought this revelation to me, speaking it only in French and still only speaks French. And, 
And he was telling me that the Americans and the Europeans and everybody else that's been trying Chinese that want to get and mine what's underneath Africa, they're not going to get it all. Because the reality is God is preserving it for Israel. Uh, the, it, it, it will be the praise in all the earth. And God is going to use Africa. It's big. It's huge. And we need to support that from the nations. It goes on to say, at that time, gifts we brought to the Lord Almighty from a people tall and smooth skinned, from a, a people feared far and wide, an aggressive nation, a strange speech whose land is divided by rivers. The gifts will be brought where? To Mount Zion, the place of the name of the Lord Almighty. I'm telling you today, from the Jordan River, a river that speaks about crossing over. A place that speaks about getting a 2020 vision. A place that speaks about deep repentance. And getting baptized with purpose to serve God. When Africans were asking me yesterday, how can we help? I felt I had to talk to him about Project Return. And then it dawned on me. Wow. What have the Western nations been doing for over 100 years? We've been sponsoring African orphans. How many of us right now have an African or an Indian or a Haitian a picture of a little boy or a girl. Maybe a letter that you received from them this past month. And you, it's on your refrigerator or on your bulletin board in your home or certainly in your church. Because you're praying for them. And you're sending them monthly. Money leaves your bank account every single month to help Africa. To support the missions so that Africans can be fed sheltered and be schooled. Could it be that what we have seen is a picture happening all over the world? I mean, millions of homes on this planet have that refrigerator magnet and have letters from some of the poorest on the planet thanking for medicine, thanking that they had three meals that day, thanking that they now have a school uniform. Some of you have gone to Africa, India, and some of these nations. And then it dawned on me yesterday. Project Return is not just for North Americans. It's not just to some of the, you in Canada and America. Project Return may have been developed, I think we developed it in 2004, and we've been using it for years. And many Jews are living in Israel because of it today. And many relationships. But maybe it was also designed for Africa. For India. And some other poor nations. And saying to them. Will you sponsor a Jewish person home? But, but for some of you, you're going. We, we could never do that. We, we, we don't make the same amount of money. Well, that's all right. But maybe you can take your shillings and maybe 10 from the nations will grab only one Jew by the hems and, how, and say, we know that God is with you and we want to help you and we will go with you. And maybe you'll support them in their aliyah. Maybe, maybe, maybe a whole church in Africa will say, we want to sponsor a Jewish person. And, and, and we will go to the return website and we'll fill out that application and PEG will match us with a Jewish person. And what would that Jewish person living in New York City, living in Toronto, Chicago, and Miami, how would they feel about their Aliyah when they know that some of the poorest people on the earth are giving what they are able to give? Why? Because the prophetic word requires it and gives prophetic response. But that they've gained this revelation to bless Israel. They want to express this mercy. And they want to do it regularly. How would you feel if you're a Jewish person out of New York? You're getting on a plane. 
And you know that there's people in Africa praying for you right now. And some have given what little they have to help you get your belongings back. How will you feel about that? Will that not reveal the depth that the God of Israel keeps his word? And if the Westerners haven't been able to do it in 72 years, that maybe it's because God is saying, no, no, this is greater glory. This is greater glory. There's, we, we can't, we're at the tip of the iceberg on this great exodus that's coming from the four corners of earth. So if you're African today and you're listening, I want to encourage you to go to our project return page. And I want you to be able to give consideration. Take that application out. Maybe go to your pastor and ask your pastor, is this something that maybe we can do as a church? And some of you are saying we can never. We're, you know, we're poorer than what Dean was even thinking about when he started talking. He doesn't know where, where we live. And maybe you live in some of those villages. Well, then maybe go to 10 more churches in your area and get 10 churches to help one you. And you're saying maybe that's still not enough. Maybe you in Africa can go to 20 or 30, 30 churches and with that in same integrity and be able to collect that which will help the Jewish people home. And we'll give you the letters. We'll even send you videos because we know a lot of you got smartphones. And that you can show the videos of the people thanking you. And you can send them videos from your village too. And let the relationship blossom and begin so that we can bring a redemption of Egypt, a redemption of Africa and Israel together. And, 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 and by helping to bring the greatest exodus that's yet to come, six million Jews are here in North America. That's bigger than Egypt. That's bigger than Northern Africa. And, and, and in this great move of God, he's left these Jews in North America because he's waiting for Africa to arise, to know their destiny, and know that he's given Africa purpose that all the earth will see. And he'll use Africa to be a part of the nations coming into order and exalting righteousness. I encourage you in Africa today to learn about Alia, to learn about your part that has already been written, Isaiah 18, Isaiah 19, Isaiah 60, uh, Psalm 72, Zephaniah chapter 3. Read your part. Get to know who you are in Christ Jesus. Know that the hope of glory lives in you to come out of you. And as a little ministry here in Canada and in the Galilee, we'll do our very best to help you learn and understand and help to facilitate it and do our best so that together we can give glory and honor to God. God bless you today from Canada. We got snow on the ground today. Um, and thank you for being with us. Uh, I know Pastor Joe is going to... Uh, put this video up on our webpage. Maybe it's something you want to show other people and help them understand about God's heart for Israel and the relevancy of Alia. And then it's not just Alia. Alia is holy, very, very holy. And we can all be a part of Alia and the holy return of Israel. God bless you. Just before we leave, um, there is, uh, we invite you to join Canada Celebrates Israel, which is coming up on Sunday. And if you wish, uh, you could, uh, we need you to register and you'll have to convert to your own time. It will be at 4 p.m. Eastern time in Canada. And also I'm just going to put up here uh, the link that you can use as well. And these are the links that we were sharing with you. So you can go back and just stop it at this spot. And we're talking about Enome, um, which starts again in January. There's the link for it. Alia, the link for it. Project Return that Peg was talking about. 
And then the last one is the uh, Light to the Nations that's coming up on Sunday. And you need to register through www.canadacelebratesisrael.ca. And that will take you to the site. And there's click on register, it's free, no cost. And uh, that's on Sunday, the 20th of December. So thank you, everybody. And you can just go back here. I'll be sending this out shortly today. You can go back and uh, click on this and see it.